progress. So it's WIP. And then on Wednesdays is when I come on here live, both on the Crafty Gemini YouTube channel and on the Crafty Gemini Facebook page at one o'clock Eastern time, because I am located in North Central Florida. So we're on East Coast time and I'm coming to y'all from my home sewing studio. I see we have a bunch of friends that are already tuning in. These are my regulars tuning in every Wednesday at 1 p.m. Eastern. Hi, Barb, tuning in from California. We got Nancy in the house from Massachusetts. Hi, Miss Diane from Maryland. We got Bren, a neighbor here from Valrico, Florida. Hi, Bren. Linda from Kansas tuning in. Hi, Miss Bernadine. I'm so glad you're back in New Orleans. Hope everything is well. All right, so I think y'all can see me and hear me. Technology seems to be doing good. I wanted to first start off by giving y'all just a quick update for those of you that are in my Jolly Giselle blouse course. The last batch of videos went up live on the video uh, course page today. If you're not familiar with what I'm talking about, maybe you're new here. Uh, we included a link in the video description box of the YouTube video here, and we'll also put it in the chat in a little bit. And that is so you can join our free email list. This is what allows me to communicate with y'all uh, regarding you know live videos coupon codes sales new classes new clubs new products that we're carrying in the online shop and so if you like what you see today here in this video maybe you've checked out my free YouTube tutorials on my channel if you want to be in the loop and it's not just via a video, make sure that you sign up for our free email list because we're cleaning things up on that end and making sure that we better communicate with y'all based on your interest, right? Because I do a lot of stuff. So I just wanted to show you some of the finished blouses. This one I made for Ali in the video lessons showing y'all how to make view B. And view B in the pattern is the longer sleeve bracelet length sleeve option. And then this is one that I made for myself the same with that keyhole button closure on the back and I wanted to show them just briefly the finished ones because we also had this fabric for sale it's rayon chalet nice lightweight blouse weight fabric and um it's sold out now but for those of you that purchased the fabric I wanted you to see it how it looks in the finished garments okay so the the last videos I actually was going to post five and I posted 10 videos for y'all so if you're in that class all you got to do is log in I also sent out an email earlier this morning now the next thing we have here to chat about uh Maria says what time is it? okay no 1 p.m eastern time is the time that I go live every Wednesday here on Crafty Gemini Facebook page and Crafty Gemini YouTube channel second new thing we've added a new product into the online shop and that is Crafty Gemini merch Many of you have been asking us for more t-shirts because we did carry t-shirts back in like 2015 for our Qu uh, quilt club members. And so we're finally back at it. We have a new shirt, cute little sewing machine with some fabric under it. Reminds me of like quilt patchwork. And then the text says pretty sides touching. So if you've been following me for any length of time, I think you will at least have heard me say it once or five times in any video tutorial. When I tell you how to place your fabrics together to sew, I always say pretty sides touching. And I'll give you the background on that real quickly. Uh, I developed that to kind of terminology of way to talk to my students. I want to say almost 15 years ago before I even started doing tutorials because I was realizing a lot of my beginner sewing students were getting confused when I would say right side. They were thinking right as in directional right, where they were going to move the fabric to instead of right as in the correct side of the fabric that was going to show in the finished project. So that's why I started uh, using that terminology with pretty sides touching because typically you're working with fabrics that you like. And when I say pretty side, you obviously know that it's the pretty side, right? And not the ugly side, the wrong side. And so I think that's a little phrase that uh, probably all of you here have heard me say before. And um, we decided to put it on a shirt. And then in the base of the sewing machine, it has hashtag crafty Gemini. So if you're a crafty Gemini fan, if you've watched my videos, You've heard me say pretty sights touching to anybody else who doesn't know might be like, what in the world does that mean? But that's the background story on that. Thank you, Kim. She says, I love the shirt so much. Awesome. All right. Uh, Joan says, yes, I like when you say that because it's easier to follow. You're welcome. And that's exactly why I tried to do it. Mirta says she got her shirt already. So I wanted to show you, we are, this is kind of a limited run of these shirts to try it out, see what the feedback is from you all, how people like it. So we can start um, getting some of my graphic designers on board to design other shirts that we can do. We can play around with different uh, t-shirt colors. So in this small run, uh, this is called Heathered, uh, Heathered Navy is the color of the top. All the, all the sizing information and uh, the fiber content 
content and stuff is listed on the product page. It's a 60, 40 polyester or cotton and polyester blend, and it's a lightweight shirt. So it's not like those stiff kind of crew necky unisex shirts that you see that are just not very flattering. I think sometimes, uh, it's less than four and a half ounces. So it's a nice lightweight shirt and we're carrying them in extra small through four XL. Okay. Just make sure that you reference the size chart there because they do have that kind of hourglass shape that sometimes the more, you know, fitted t-shirts have. So this one that I'm holding up is a size small and the one I'm wearing is the size XL. And it's kind of long, so it can cover all the way past my butt if you're wearing pants. So if you're like me and you hate short shirts, these are pretty good and long. And then I have one here, I believe in a 4X, yes. And so this is the 4X size, okay? So we do have these in the shop right now, limited run. Um, when we sell out of these, we have to kind of reassess and see what else we're going to do. And then I can start getting some of my graphic designers to uh, work on some more cutesy designs because I would love to wear a different t-shirt here for y'all every Whip Wednesday. I think that would be super fun. Okay, so that's that. The link for that is in the description below on this YouTube video and then also in the chat on Facebook. If you're new, you can always, always shop with us on our website. It's craftygemini.com and we have a tab right there for shop. We have hundreds of products, physical and digital, so you can always find our stuff there. Hi, Lindy. She says she's finally getting to catch me live on a Whip Wednesday. And Joan says, such a cute shirt. Sarah says, love the shirt. Awesome. Hi, Tina from Texas. Okay, now I've covered that, that, that. Let's get started with our demo. So, if you haven't seen on my on my YouTube channel, I have kind of a, a place card holder thing there for a scheduled live chat that I'm going to do on October 1st. That's gonna be different to anything I've done before. This is gonna be called Fiber Fridays. And so the first Friday of every month, I am going to be hosting a live event on my YouTube channel where I will chat with you about all the stuff fiber. So I'm really trying to clean up my corner over here with all my knitting, crochet, circular sock machine, knitting, spinning stuff. And so I've been getting a lot of content together in, uh, in preparation for those fiber Fridays. So if you're into crochet, knitting, stuff like that, I feel like going into fall and winter, we're going to have a lot to chat about and I have new projects in the works. I have some new designs that are at the testers right now. Um, so I'm looking forward to kind of growing that side of my business. And so what I wanted to do, like I said, I was getting organized. I needed to make myself some tiny little zippered pouches to keep all my stitch markers, um, those uh, protective tips for my knitting needles, little measuring tapes, all that stuff. So let's go ahead and switch to this camera angle and then we'll start talking about this project and I'll get to starting uh, the steps on how to make it for you. Okay, let me scoot this back and that looks good and I'm gonna zoom me in. And it's a shame that everything I like is aqua because this is gonna be blending in a lot, but that's okay. Remind me to zoom out once I start moving into bigger pieces because then I forget. So here I have a little measuring tape. This is the teensy little zipper pouch. Let's go ahead and measure it. It measures finished four inches by about three and a half. Okay. Yes. So four by three and a half. It's so cute. It's so teensy. And you know what that means? Super fast to make. All right. So here it is. And I want to show you like it's little, but man, I have a little bit of stuff in there, like a good bit, you know? So for my notions, you see, I have all these different little stitch markers and a little um, cable needle, a little measuring tape. And if you don't knit or crochet and don't need these kinds of things, you can also use this for all your little hand sewing stuff. Let me see this and this. See, imagine you were taking this with you to bind a quilt or something. I can throw my thimble in there, a little retractable seam ripper, and these we carry in our shop. Super cute, compact, fits perfectly fine. And this is a kind of a chunky spool of thread, right? It's not super little, but you can put all these in there and throw it in your little project bag. And I think the size is just so, so cute. Keep this in your back pocket, even if you don't think right now that you're gonna make this along with me in the demo here, uh, because when you need a quick gift, this is awesome. For kids, you can even fold up cash, put a little gift card in there, anything. And I also uh, like to do this when I have tiny zippers, like not super little, but like the short ones that you're kind of like, why did I buy this? I don't make pockets this small. So this is a zipper. I mean, I have probably had this in my stash for 10 years <laughs> because it's kind of small. This is only one, two, three, four, five, six, a, not even a full seven inch zipper. And there's zippers that are even smaller, like four or five inch zipper. So if you have short zippers, use them up. 
All right, let me put my stuff back in here and we'll start talking fabric dimensions. Patricia says, would that fit a gift card? Thinking of a cute way to present a gift card at Christmas. For sure. So gift cards, and I'm going to, I think I have like a little business card or card, an old credit card or something here. Let's see. I keep all this stuff here because I'm always doing projects for like demos and um, here. My Ikea card. Perfect. And this already has stuff in it, but you can see that that fit in there perfect. So gift card, easy peasy. Okay. So you can put that in there. Super cute. That's a great idea for the holidays. <laughs> Wait till you see how small the piece of fabric is that we need to make this. Uh, Y'all are going to hit up your stash for sure. Okay. Let's see. Jenny says, I love this. I need this for my knitting bag. Hi, Jenny Fish. <laughs> All right. Let's see. Um, okay. So we'll do that. So this, this, let me put this stuff in here and scoot it aside. Cause I have notions pouches, but sometimes they're like a little bit big. I only need like a little, you know, a couple different stitch markers. And I'm like, why do I have this chunky little pouch, uh, for that? So I think I could even stand to make this a little bit smaller depending on your use. Okay. So the fabric piece that we are going to cut is four and a half inches by seven. That's literally nothing. Okay. So this super cute fabric I thought I would use. This is uh, by my friend, Sarah Watts, who's an amazing artist and fabric designer. If you don't know her, definitely check her out. You may know her from Ruby star society. Um, this is her Instagram at Watts a lot. And this is from her Florida collection. This one says volume one, uh, amazing. It has this metallic gold wings on it. And this is what we're going to use. I'm going to grab my five inch by 10 inch crafty Gemini ruler which we do have back in stock, y'all. I'm going to cut myself a chunk here first because I want to get rid of the selvage. Uh, like that is long enough. And then we'll subcut it down to seven. Okay. So I'm going to come this way. Seven inches. So I place my big seven. And let me try and scoot over here for y'all. I put my big seven on the clean cut edge. And then I'm going to cut here. So I know that my full length will be the seven. And then I'm going to turn it around. This side looks freshly cut too. And then we're going to go four and a half. And this ruler measures five inches wide. So I can just place it right there at the four and a half. And cut my little baby piece of fabric. I mean, this looks like a piece for, pa for a patchwork project. Okay. Now the interfacing that I'm going to use for this, and it actually is what gives it the shape for such a small little piece of fabric is one of my favorite interfacings to use when I want something crisp. This is called Durafuse and we do have some in the shop. I don't think we have that much left, but it's a massive sheet that you get. We use it a lot in my bag clubs, in my wallet clubs, when we make those types of projects. And so it is a crisp, non-woven fusible interfacing. And it's like, imagine you put together your quilting cotton fabric and a piece of cardstock, kind of. And so you put them together, fuse them because this is a fusible interfacing. And that is what the kind of the finished hand of the fabric piece is, which I like for crisp edges, hard wallets that you want to have that like that finish that crisp hand to them. So what I'm going to do is use the four and a half inch by seven inch piece that I cut out of my fabric as the template. So I'm just going to place it on top of my Durafuse here. And, uh, this is, it's not hard to tell which side is the adhesive because one side has more of a matte finish and the other side, you can probably see a little bit on camera. There's like a sheen to it. And that shinier side is the side that has the adhesive. So wrong side of my fabric piece down onto the shiny side. And I'm just going to quickly cut around it. So you tell me how many of these you can make out of a fat quarter. I mean, this is barely any fabric at all. <laughs> I love those kinds of projects, don't you? Let's get my Durafuse up and out of the way. Awesome. All right, let me bring my Martelli mat here because I have um, the ironing mat right on it. So now... Because I double check, wrong side, ugly side of the fabric, <laughs> onto the shiny side of the Durafuse. And this interfacing, when I first started using it years ago, I remember some of my students were having trouble with getting it to fuse. So here's a trick. Hit it with a spray of water, or you can put a damp cloth over it, you know? You want to create steam to help the adhesive melt and stick to the wrong side of the fabric. Maybe I sprayed too much water. We'll wait a second so that absorbs into the fabric itself. 
Okay, now because this is a non-woven interfacing, oh, I'm okay there. Because it's non-woven, you don't want to hit the interfacing itself with an iron, ever. Not from the back side like this when it's exposed, even if this side doesn't have the adhesive. You always want to have a cotton buffer between the iron and the interfacing itself. So I'm going to start right here. Start in the middle. Was my iron hot? Yeah, it's hot. So then I smooth it out. So the trick to these, to pretty much any fusible interfacing is like not to scrunch in with your iron from the outside in because then you create these bubbles of the fabric. Like there'll be more fabric in the inside area than on the outside and then you can't press it flat because it's just not the same size as the interfacing. So I always start like in the center and kind of smooth out. So now I'm gonna go in the center and smooth out but towards me. And that will help get any air bubbles out. At the same time, it's creating steam from the water I sprayed and it's heating it up to have it fuse. Look how pretty that looks. And when you think it's done, give it a little bit more because sometimes around the edges, if you don't really, really get that to melt down, once you pick it up, you'll see that it'll start pick, uh, like separating on you. So fusible adhesives, I always recommend you give it a second. Let it cool off because if you start handling it, that adhesive is still warm and it's easy to peel it off, which is also a great tip. If you mess up, hit it with the iron again, and while it's hot, peel it, and that way you'll separate it. So troubleshooting and tips. Okay, so then I like to flip it over. Make sure that I don't feel or see any bubbles, and you can see on the edge, good. I got it really nice and stuck down. Great. Okay, so that's that. Now, let me just pop in and see. Um, Nancy says, is there an easy way to know what interface to use when doing different projects? So if you're trying to decide on your own what interfacing to use, that's going to come from time and experience, having made so many different projects with different interfacings in different applications. And that's when you really get good at like seeing a project or having an idea and then thinking, yeah, if I go with this interfacing, it'll be too stiff. If I go with that one, it'll be too light. I know that I should go with this one. And so that's going to come from having had that experience. Otherwise, if you're new and you're trying to get into using different interfacings for projects, follow what the designer recommends. And that's a good place to start because you know it's already going to work. The designer created it with that interfacing use in mind. And two, you're going to make a cute project. And that way, then you'll have already had some experience with that specific interfacing. Okay, awesome. Um, Carol says, can Durafuse be washed and dried? So Carol, I wash um, bags that I've made with the Durafuse interfacing. I wash them cold and then I will take them out of the dryer. Like I let it spin all the way off. Most of the time it's like damp, almost dry. And then I will just press it with an iron. Because if you set it to dry in the dryer hot, that heat is going to reactivate that uh, adhesive. And you don't want the layers to start coming apart on you in the dryer, right? I rather have the control of hitting it with the heat, saying like, okay, this area right here, let me make sure this is flat, and that on top of that, you're then pressing the, the fabric to the interfacing where you had it already done, you know? So you have a little bit more control that way. You could put it like on a tumble low dry to get some of the moisture out, and then finish it off with a press if you want, okay? Okay, awesome. So this is ready. This is what we need. Ta-da! Just fabric interface to the Durafuse. You see how crisp that is? I mean, it still flaps a little bit, but it is crispy. I love it. Great shape. But one of the things is, when you'll see when we flip it right side out, some people are like, oh, it's so crinkly. It's just like paper. All you have to do is give it another steam press after you're done with the project for the final press, okay? So let's move some of this stuff out of the way. Let's grab our zipper, okay? And my sewing machine... I have some fun aqua thread in here and a zipper foot. Okay, let me set up this shot real quick for the um, sewing machine. Oh, not bad, barely had to move it. I think I'm good there. Okay, so the first step, and I have a couple of clips here. If you don't have sewing clips, you need to get some. They come in super duper handy for all kinds of little projects. All right, so this easy, easy zipper pouch, and we've done another demo on a larger one. This is a great beginner project that I start off a lot of kid beginners, especially, because they leave with a cute pouch that they can use for all the things, and it's super easy to make, and they also learn how to insert a zipper. So the way it works is, this is how we're going to stitch the zipper on here. So you want to have a zipper that's a little bit longer than the width here, just because it makes it easier to work with. And we're going to place them visually the way we want to see them. So my zipper is face up. That means I see the teeth, I see the zipper pull. That's what I mean by pretty side face up. Whoop. 
And then the fabric is also pretty side face up. So then I'm going to take the zipper and flip it over this top. So notice that bottom edge of the zipper tape, when I flip it onto it, is now flush with the top edge of the fabric. And that is when you place your two pieces, zipper and fabric, with pretty sides touching. Like my shirt, pretty sides touching. All right. So now we're going to take our zipper foot and, and also notice, remember I said have a zipper that's a little bit longer than the width of the fabric chunk here. Have it extend past a little bit here and a little bit there. Don't scoot it all to one side. You're trying to buy yourself some room to work with, okay, on either end when we get to the second step of sewing the zipper part. Okay, so I've installed the zipper foot on my machine. If your machine has one, play around with it on some scrap fabric so you can see how it works, okay? Now... I am going to, the way that the zipper foot typically work, depending on the machine, some of the semi-industrials can be a little bit different, but you're going to follow the raw edge here of the zipper and the fabric along the right side edge of the zipper foot. Now, I've installed the zipper foot on the left side of it. You can move the zipper foot to the right or to the left. I have it here so that it's on the left, and you can tell if you have it right because the needle is going to come down on the right side of the zipper teeth there, and that's where I want to stitch first. All right, so my needle is where it needs to be. Actually, I moved the needle position. Let me not break a needle live on camera. Let me set it to the default. That way I know it's in the center. Okay, good. <laughs> Don't move your needle position over when you have a zipper foot on because if you scoot it over from a previous project and you don't set it back to your default setting, once you take that first stitch, you're going to break the needle on the zipper foot. Ask me how I know. Everybody has done that, right? Let me know if you've done that in the comments below. I'm pretty sure we all have. Okay. Stitch length, I have it about anywhere between 2 millimeters to 2.5. I'm going to do 2.4 on mine. Let me slow it down a little. All right, the needle is down, and again, I'm just following it here with the edge to stitch these two together first. And this is another thing that's helpful with the Durafuse interfacing. So the zipper tape itself is kind of sturdy, right? If you're sewing that sturdy zipper tape to a flimsy fabric, sometimes the fabric moves and distorts on you because it's a looser weave. There we go, that was caught on the machine. Uh, because it's a looser weave, we don't want it to move. But because I've interfaced it with the Durafuse, it is now nice and stable and it is virtually like sewing through cardstock. And maybe you took a beginner sewing class where they had you sew through cardstock. Sometimes I start kids off like that too because it's so stiff, it's easy, and you don't have to worry about the fabric layers moving on you or anything. Okay, so the first side is stitched. Now I'm going to pull up on the zipper to reveal the pretty side, okay? And as I do that, I also need to press the seam allowance down. So I don't want the seam allowance up like this. I want it down like this. So you can finger crease this again because the Durafuse interfacing is so nice and crisp, or you can just pop it on your ironing board real quick and um, give it a press. But you see, like that. So now I'm going to top stitch here because I want that interfacing that I just pressed down towards the back, towards the interfacing side, I want that to be stitched down, held down there so that I don't deal with this flipping up or down and possibly getting caught in the teeth of the zipper as I'm opening and closing the project, okay? Oh, yes, you see Nancy says she has, Mary Grace says she has, Rosella says several times. It happens. We just have to try and remember, right, all our different settings. But we got to be thankful that these machines allow us to do so much these days. All right, now for the top stitching, you know me, I always lengthen my top stitch. I like to see that nice stitch definition. So I'm going to set it to 3 millimeters in length. And I don't change my zipper foot. I leave it on the left side. By the time I orient this this way, I can now just top stitch here. So what I do now, whereas in the previous step, I lined up the right side edge of my zipper foot with the top edge of the fabric and zipper. Now I'm aligning it to the left side of the zipper teeth themselves, okay? And this is the part that's gonna show. So you wanna take your time and be nice and straight and consistent. And mine may not have been that perfect, but you know what it is. On-camera sewing is not the best, but it actually looks really good. Yes, okay. So here it is. And I love this aqua thread. It really blends in with the fabric nicely. So that's my line of top stitching. Let me show y'all. I did a good job, huh? <laughs> 
So that's the line of top stitching. When I flip it over, you see where it is? So now that's that second line that's down here that's holding that seam allowance down and flat. Okay, so that is good to go. Okay, next one. Next side. So we have one side of the zipper attached to the fabric. So now this top edge of the zipper tape needs to be attached to this one here. Okay, to bring it all together. So all you're going to do is fold your fabric up and place it pretty sides touching fabric to zipper again. And pretty side, remember, is where you see the zipper teeth and where you see that zipper pull where you're actually going to be opening and closing. it. So bring this up and when you do, just make sure that you're aligning the sides of the fabric. Do not place it off to the side like this. You're going to have a hot mess on your hands and you're going to have to trim it and make it smaller and smaller and smaller to end up with a working pouch. So just bring it straight up. Align that there, and again, the Durafuse is like a cardstock. You literally score it across the bottom, and it'll stay folded right there. Put a clip, put a clip, just so nothing moves. Now I'm going to shorten my stitch length again, because I'm going back to a construction stitch. This is sewing the zipper to fabric, and then I'm going to do the same thing we did previously, right? Follow the right side edge of my zipper foot to stitch this one into place. Okay. <laughs> I see some of y'all are still saying you've done that. <laughs> Have the needle position still switched and put on a press or a, a zipper foot and hit it and broke a needle. It happens. Um, Suzu is asking, is the Durafuse comparable to Decoville Light? I actually have never used Decoville, so I can't tell you. But if somebody else has used Decoville and Durafuse, let us know in the chat, because I don't know the answer to that. Okay. Uh, all right. So now, we've sewn that one there together. Okay. So we need to do the same thing we just did, which was press this down towards the interfacing and top stitch it. But obviously I can't do it in the way that it's oriented right now. So here is where you're going to reach in to that zipper pull. Let me push it in there so I can reach it from the other side. You're going to open up the zipper from the inside. Okay. Flip it. And now I'm looking at the side that I just stitched, okay? This seam allowance needs to be tucked down under towards the interfacing. So grab it, flip it, and crease it down. I love this Durafuse. You see that I haven't even had to touch the iron yet. Okay, so now, and let me make sure I don't lose my thread and my needle. So now it's there. So if we look at this side, I have my stitching. I need to also have some stitching here. Well, how do I do this? It's kind of little. I'm in a tight spot, okay? Even if I remove the free arm from my machine, this is going to be tight to try and get in there. And so here's what I like to do. And this also goes for those of you that have sewing machines that are set inside tables because you can't expose the free arm to drape anything over. And this mini zip pouch is super little, so you won't be able to do that anyways. So I press it, crease it. When it's ready to be top stitch, I will flip it this way. And then I insert my presser foot inside the project so that I'm still top stitching from the pretty side. You always want to do it from that side so you can see what it's going to look like and you can be more careful because you're working on the side that's going to show, right? We want to make sure it's as straight as we can get it. And so then, I hope you all can see that. I'm going to move this out of my way and align the same as we did before. The right side edge of my zipper is going to be right on the right side edge of my um, zipper teeth. Okay. And then it's a top stitch. So let's go back to change the length of the stitch. And I think I did three millimeters. Yeah, we'll try that. But usually between three and 3.5, some machines can be a little bit different. And then I'm just top stitch right here. And you may have noticed that I haven't been back stitching at the beginning or the end of any of these seams. And the reason for that is that we still have to stitch up the sides. So whenever I have like an intersecting seam that's coming up in a future step, I don't even bother to backstitch because I know that seam is going to come perpendicular to these seams that I've previously sewed in a further step. And that will be enough to secure it. Okay, so there's the little pouch. Let's flip it this way. If we close it. There's the little pouch, okay? So let me scoop this out the way. Let me grab my ironing board. My iron kick-started again. 
And this is where you can probably start to see that there are some wrinkles in the interfacing. We haven't even flipped it out yet, but you can always be pressing this as you go because we have that fabric layer protecting the heat from hitting the Durafuse directly, okay? Thanks, Heather. She says, don't forget to give her a like for the video. If you're enjoying this demo, definitely make sure to give us a thumbs up. You can share it on Facebook with your other crafty friends because we're on here every Wednesday at 1 o'clock p.m. Eastern doing something. <laughs> okay. So I like to press it like this, which is the visual representation of what the finished pouch is going to look like. But obviously we can't sew it like this because it's not pretty sides touching, okay? This is gonna leave you with raw edges on the outside. So I leave it like this, just pressed into those creases. And you'll notice that after we have already zone, um, sewn the zipper in, you can adjust this to wherever you want the zipper to be. So if for some reason you need a pouch that has a zipper right down the middle, just roll it till you get that zipper in the spot you need it and then press it there, okay? For me, I need the little pouch to hold stuff down here so I don't need much up top, okay? So I want most of the space in it to be underneath the zipper so I can drop stuff in. So it's been pressed, looks good. Now we're gonna flip it, okay? wrong side out because we need to sew it up pretty sides touching. So just open it up. And in this step, close the zipper about halfway. This is where when we're going to sew next and I'm going to roll this back to where it was and I can see where the crease is. Okay. So opposite crease. So there and there. And then here's my crease that I made earlier. So I align everything back. Oh, and I almost went against what I told y'all to do. Do not hit this interfacing with your iron, <laughs> even from the wrong side, okay? It's non-woven. It's a synthetic, especially me that I love to have my iron at the hottest setting. Just throw another little piece of fabric up over top of it. Remember, you need that buffer, okay? If you mess up your iron, it's not my fault. I told you. I warned you. Okay, so that's that. And then I'm going to give it a press up top here just to set that. And where's my clapper? I cannot believe I've been working without this clapper the whole time. Sheesh. If you don't know about the Taylor's clapper, you gotta catch up. This thing helps us make perfect creases in everything from patchwork to bag making to garments, woven fabrics, knits, everything. And we do, I think we might still have some in the shop. You can do a search at craftygemini.com slash shop. There's a little magnifying glass on the top right hand side when you're in the shop page and anything you're looking for, you can just type in a keyword for it and it'll pop up. So just type in wood, clapper, one of those words, it'll pop up. All right. So the reason we want to open this and leave the zipper pull inside is because we're going to head to the sewing machine and stitch down the sides. So what happens if you have the zipper pull off? to one side because you're thinking, I don't want it in my way. If I stitch here, I'm not gonna have a working zipper pull inside to use. So <laughs> this is another one of those zipper pouch bag making things that we've all been there and have all done it, right? If we ventured out into these projects, we've all left the zipper pull out. Don't do it. Okay, so now you can see how crisp the Durafu stays. You really probably don't even need clips, but I'm gonna put some anyways. Here where the zipper is open, I'm gonna put a clip to hold those teeth a little bit close together. I'll work with it more when I'm at the sewing machine, but I mean, it's such a small little tiny zip pouch. You probably don't even need clips, but I'm gonna put a couple. Where's the other layer there? Okay, that's plenty. And I haven't cut the zipper tape yet. I haven't touched anything. I like to sew first. Then you make sure, okay, I have my zipper pull. It looks like a pouch. Then go in and cut away the excess. All right, so now we're gonna head to the sewing machine and I'm just gonna use a quarter of an inch seam allowance and we're just gonna stitch down both sides here. Yes, we will have raw edges inside of our project. I get this all the time. If you need a really nicely finished pouch, this little tiny zip pouch is not it, okay? We can use our pinking shears and I'll show you how to do that after the fact, um, like after we sew it into the seam allowance. If you have a serger, you can do that. But honestly, this is such a small pouch, look. Like you can't even see inside to access that raw edge. I mean, it's like literally tucked there. I have to flip this whole thing out to get to it. And I'll tell you what, if you do use a Durafuse or another comparable interfacing, because it's fusible and it's so sturdy, it is going to fuse the fabric to it. So you're not gonna have that issue of like raw cotton fabric fraying and coming apart on you. You've turned it into a stiff piece of paper practically by adding the Durafuse to it. So. I know, I know. Some people want it super finished, but this ain't it. This is like a five minute project. 
when I'm not talking. Um, okay, so we're going to use a quarter of an inch seam allowance, backstitch at the beginning. I always like to backstitch right here where the join of the zipper teeth is, and I just go back and forth, back and forth. I don't know why, but I do it. I feel like it just helps keep it there so that when you're opening and pulling, every time that the zipper pull hits that connection there, it'll... It, it, I have found in the past that it comes apart. So I just backstitch several times there, come down and then backstitch at the end. So backstitching beginning and end and then over top a couple times right where uh, the zipper teeth are. And of course, this is assuming that you're working with a zipper like mine that has plastic teeth. If you got a metal zipper, do not try to do this back and forth, back and forth. You can do it slowly by cranking the hand wheel on your machine, but don't try to do what I'm about to do here. Okay, let me take off my zipper foot because I like my regular universal foot for quarter inch seams. And then I know I won't break a needle because this has plenty of clearance for anywhere that I need to move the needle position to. So I'm going to move it over because I'm using a uh, quarter of an inch seam allowance. You good? <laughs> let me take a sip. All right, so quarter inch on this machine, I usually do like 5.5 or 6. Okay, so now I'm using the raw edge of the fabric on the right side edge of my presser foot. So this is when you hear us say in tutorials and videos like um, use the edge of your presser foot as your guide. That's what this means, okay? And then this is a construction seam, so I'm going to shorten my stitch length. A 2.4 should be fine. Let's see. Uh, let's see. Tamara says that's one reason why I love using Durafuse. It is. It's a great way to like take a shortcut, add some stability to a project, and at the same time, don't worry too much about the raw edges. <laughs> okay, I'm going to sink my needle down. That looks good. Backstitch. And so when I get to the first bit of where the zipper is open and I have the zipper teeth, try to hold them together because since it's not actually closed, you'll see that the zipper teeth don't lie like one on top of the other. They kind of want to spread out a little bit more. So I just hold it close there. And then backstitch a couple times because that's just what I do. And then backstitch at the end too. All right, easy peasy. You can see how this is a great beginner project, quick project for those of us that do so already, and for kids, because the seams are so short, you know? For little kids especially, I mean, I've, my kids made these pouches when they were like five on a machine. You can break it up. They don't have that long attention span, but they still kind of get encouraged and feel motivated because they see the finished project quick versus like getting a kid to make a big quilt that's gonna take them three years to do. Not so much fun, at least not for me. Okay, so I did the same thing on this side. Super cute and super crisp. All right, so now the questions that we ask ourselves, right? I left the zipper pull inside, I did good. I'm gonna have a working pouch. Now I can go ahead and trim away the excess zipper tape flush with the sides. Same on the other side. And do you see how crisp this is? Like, there's no fabric fraying from there. That Durafuse, it just, I mean, you literally turn your stuff into paper. So you could go in with some pinking shears or a serger. It's gonna be tricky to do this because I have yet to find really good pinking shears that can go through a ton of bulk, but eh. And usually what I'll do, I don't have a lighter here, but you can light the edges, the cut raw edges of, a, of the zipper tape and they will just fuse down, and that way you don't have to worry about that either, but this is more to just like show, oh my goodness, do not have me cut into my whole project. You see what happens when you deal with bulky layers? I mean, this thing even peeled the Durafuse off. Yeah, don't do the pinking shears. No need, but okay. All right, so that's that. I'm gonna give this another press because every time I sew something, it's just, I have to press it with an iron. Okay, here and here, and, and I hit the interfacing. You see, I'm glad the iron wasn't fully on. Again, put a fabric buffer in between. Oh my gosh, I swear. If I melt this here with y'all. Okay, now we're gonna reach in here, open the zipper completely now, and it's kind of small, so it's a little tight. Just grab that pull and pull it all the way over. Here's another tip that's gonna help you uh, flip the whole thing right side out. I like to grab, where's my big? A bamboo knitting needle, chopstick, anything like that that has a blunt tip though. Don't use anything super sharp to point, 
poke the corners out. And then with my scissors, I'm just trimming about a 45 degree angle away at the bottom corners. That helps us reduce some bulk so that I can poke the corners out a little bit better. Okay, so now, this probably takes the longest, is flipping this thing right side out. And you can see how when you're crumpling this Durafuse, this is where people are like, oh no, my project is ruined. My wallet looks horrible. I don't like this Durafuse. And then you give it a press and it's like magic. Okay, so this is the hot mess you have right now. No worries. Poke out all your corners. Careful. And even with some of these, I'm a little bit rough handed and um, Notice I'm using the bigger one because if I use one like this, I will definitely poke through the corners. I know myself. So just something a little blunt, but you see nice crisp corners. We'll do the same thing to the opposite side, the other four here. You want to push all that stuff in. And this is another reason that the raw edges don't really matter because we are literally tucking this stuff so far into these corners that you're not going to see it. And it doesn't have any free room to fray anyways, even if it was going to. There we go. That's the last little bit I needed. Okay. Now, close my... Oh my gosh, how cute. Okay. <laughs> how cute, seriously. Okay, so now you see that it's kind of a wrinkly little bit, but because it also creases well, you see that I kind of pressed it flat myself. But if you don't like that look, dun da da. let me heat up my iron. I don't have any raw Durafuse. This is all cotton now, so I'm good with the iron. I'm going to hit it with some water to create some steam. And that's just going to help in case any of the, uh, or any of the Durafuse Dur uh, interfacing decided to like move or separate a little bit or crinkle up. The moisture again with the heat of the iron is going to help us stick it back down. Okay. So, oh my gosh, I'm obsessed with this size. I think this is the cutest notions pouch. Look at that. Look at that. <laughs> no wrinkles. I'm telling you, that's all you got to do. Deal with the wrinkles while you work and just give it a final steam press. If you have Durafuse in your stash and you hate to use it, try this project. You'll love it. Super cute. I'll flip it. Do the same thing. I feel it's still a little damp on this side. Do that. Carla says, OMG, so tiny, tiny, cute. I'm telling you, so cute. Um, Aruna says she uses plastic chopsticks to poke the corners out. It comes in handy. That's a great idea. So yeah, look at that super cutesy little zip pouch, y'all. I love it. I love it. All right, so I hope that y'all will give that a try. Pick up some Durafuse from our online shop. Check out my Pretty Sides Touching t-shirts. We have them in size extra small through 4XL. And I'll actually, I'll hold up t-shirts again in case some of you are tuning in new. Yay! Uh, <laughs> This is a small size just for reference, but there's a size chart there from the manufacturer of the t-shirts that I've included in the product page. This is a size small. You can see it has some shaping at the waistline. And then this is the size 4X. So it goes extra small through 4X, okay? And they're gonna start shipping out on Monday, all right? So it's kind of like a little pre-order so we can get everything situated, my packing team, sort everything out by sizes, and then we'll start shipping those out on Monday, all right? If you are in the Jolie Giselle online course, remember, new videos went up today, the last ones, 10 more. I think there's like 30 some videos in the course now. And we have a last live Zoom on Saturday for students that are registered for that class, okay? Check out uh, our online shop. We have tons and tons of digital products, physical products. If you need stuff, uh, Taylor's Clapper, the little mist water bottle that I used here, we have all that stuff in our shop. And a lot of times people join me here for my videos and they don't even know that we sell stuff. So yes, we sell stuff. And we definitely appreciate all your support. Uh, enjoy the rest of your week, everybody. Thanks to all of you who tuned in. Oh my gosh, so fun in the chat. Everybody says, so stinking cute. Glenda says she loves the t-shirts. Margie says, so cute. Thank you so much. Enjoy the rest of your week, and I will see y'all back next Wednesday for another episode of Whip Wednesday. Bye.